one tonight. If you're a guest with us here this evening, we are so glad to have you in service with us tonight. For those of you that are joining us online, we welcome you. Pray that you're blessed by this service. Those of you that are a part of us, that are watching online, we miss you. We love you. And I, it's been a while since I've said it. I really, that's not to be trite. It's not to be whatever, right? I got a text this afternoon at lunchtime from someone from the West Coast was watching service this morning and texted me to tell me if if the message was for nobody else this morning it was for them so you just you never know praise God see if you recognize this verse Matthew chapter 5 verse number 13 if you weren't here Thursday night I'm encouraging you to, to watch, listen. Uh, we have little technical difficulties on YouTube. We're getting worked out. If you're on Facebook, uh, you can just go there and watch it. But um, it ties into what the Lord is saying and what the Lord is going to continue to say for a season here. So Matthew 5 and 13, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Living Bible says, you are the world's seasoning to make it tolerable. (laughs) You're the world's seasoning to make it tolerable. If you lose your flavor, what will happen to the world? And you yourselves will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. And in the Message Bible, let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. I want to I want to preach to you tonight on the on the value of salt. The value of salt. Lord, thank you so much for your presence, your spirit, your work. Thank you, God, for inviting us to be a part of your kingdom. Your kingdom is so big. Your kingdom is so great. You've invited every one of us individually. You've invited us collectively as a body, as a church, to be a part of your kingdom. So God, I pray that everything that needs to be done in us, to us, through us, to be most effective in your kingdom would be accomplished, Lord. I pray, God, that your work would be done in this place tonight. I trust and believe, God, that we are in a a divinely ordered season, ever how long that goes, wherever that's taking us. We want to follow. We want to be responsive, Lord. We don't want your word and the seed of your word to be falling on ground that is not prepared to be good ground to receive and produce. So God, let our hearts be good ground tonight. I pray that you would continue ministering in this service as you've already been doing. That you would speak to us. I pray God give us ears to hear tonight. Lord, I know so many of us have been in church for so long. Preaching and teaching is just, if we're not careful, it can just become a routine part of what we do. But by your help, by your grace, by your spirit, every individual that stands in this pulpit is delivering a message, a word from you, and don't let us miss whatever you want to say and whatever you do. Once again tonight, Father, I trust you, I depend on you, trust you for your anointing tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, you may be seated.
I, I born and raised in this, as most of you know, got the Holy Ghost when I was seven years old. I've never backslid. I can't say that I've always been on fire for God, but, but I've been in church all my life. And, and now at 50 plus years old, I still continue, Brother Middleton, to be amazed at just how amazing God is and how amazing the Word of God is. And we know John 1 tells us the Word was God, so we sometimes refer to them separately, but one in the same. And, 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 and specifically in this context this evening, this, this evening the, the absolute amazingness of the Word of God. How that things written thousands of years ago at a time that was very different than our time, could be written and said in such a way that thousands of years later they would still be applicable. That you could still glean truth and principles and, and wisdom from those things. The world, man can't do that. What man says, what man does, it, it goes out of date. It, it, it has to be revised. You... You need, it, you need updated versions. I mean, I feel like it's almost every week, probably not, but I feel like it's almost every week that at least one of my Apple devices is telling me there's a software update. Uh, there are some apps on my phone. I feel like every day they have an update because there's bugs, there's glitches, there's things they're trying to fix. How amazing is it? That thousands of years ago, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God spoke all of this into order. And from the very beginning, the very first time, it was absolutely perfect. There was no oops. I got. Let me let me try that again. Let me let me uh, let me tweak that. We need an update. We need a we need a soft. It was it was all right, correct from the beginning. And and so there there is something in 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 the context of this message tonight that that on one hand I think it's important for us to to remember that there are things spoken throughout Scripture, Old and New Testament, and, and in the context of this message, especially some of the things that Jesus said that that at that day and time there was there was a, a I don't know necessarily a different meaning, but there was different things going on. There was, there was a different context to those things. And, and so what, what is amazing to me is kind of a two sides to that. One side is things that had a context that they probably understood what he was saying in a little bit different way than we initially take it. Still, it, it, it still has some relevance and value to us. But, but the other thing that's, that's also really awesome, and if you've never done this, you, you really ought to do it sometime, is, 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 is while you may take some things at face value and what they may seem to mean to us in 2022, it, it, it can also add a whole other level of revelation and understanding if you go back to that time and try to dig into some things based on that time and that context. I guess to a degree an example of that would have been Thursday night as I used the verses from Revelation and, and what Jesus said to the church at Laodicea that, that you're, you're, you're neither hot or cold because for us today, again, when you, when you talk in those terms, especially if you use them in a sports context, you, you don't want to be cold. <laughs> You don't want to be cold because if you're cold, that means you're not performing well. You're, you're not shooting well. You're not hitting well. You're, you're, you're off. You're off your game. We, you want to be hot. And, 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 and I think there's some things, if that's the only way you've ever read that and understood that, I think there's some things you can still glean from that. But when you dig a little deeper, you find out actually that's not what he was saying and, 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 and that it's not a bad thing to be cold. It's, it's a bad thing to be neither one. It's a bad thing to be stuck in the middle and, and, and not be hot for the reasons you have hot water or cold for the reasons you have cold water. And so I, 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 a couple of days ago as these verses, and if you missed last Sunday night, I'm definitely encouraging you to go back and watch and listen because I believe we're in a season that God's going to continue saying some things that law 
far as my ministry concern over the next little bit in, in connection to this. So the other day I got to thinking because I, I, I don't know about you, but, but all my life I've read these verses, I've heard these verses, and this is basically what I think of. Or the small salt shaker on the table. So, okay. So you, you, you say we, we are salt. We are the salt of the... Okay, well, all right. So that's, that's what I use to season my food some. That's what's used in cooking. I, I am, uh, if you don't know this, some of you may have a little bit of an idea. I promise you, besides, besides uh, as much of an idea as all of you have, there, there's several people in this room that, that know it on a whole other level, and that's my kids, and ultimately my wife knows it more than anybody else. I am a very, very stubborn person. I, 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 it's... Uh, it's, it's so, yeah, I know all of us have some degree of stubbornness, but there are some of us that seem to have been blessed with a little bit more of it. Because the bottom line is if you will use stubbornness in the right direction, it can be a good thing. The problem is we have a tendency for our stubbornness to not be used in the right direction, especially when your stubbornness is against God. So, But I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't. I don't really salt, there, there's only, uh, there's basically two things that I ever add salt to at the table. One of them is uh, chips at a Mexican restaurant. And, and, and it's not good enough just to salt the basket of chips. I want the salt shaker and every single chip. Needs its own portion of salt. I don't like salsa. I don't, I don't, Elizabeth and I out of our clan and the additions to the clan, uh, we, we, we don't need sauce. We don't like sauce. Uh, and, and so I, I, everybody else dipping their salsa, and I just, I just want the chips, and I just want some salt. And, and, and every now and then, I try to do it a little bit discreetly, but every now and then there's quite the buildup of salt on the table, so I try to just discreetly brush it off onto the floor or my lap first and then off of my lap. On the, the other thing that I add salt to all the time is is fries all the rest of that and so there's times many times through the years my wife will put food on the table and she'll say I I, I forgot to salt this or I, I I didn't put enough salt in that and usually what comes after that is but I know you're not going to add any and she's right there's probably a point at which I may have added some but since she now says I'm not going to add any I'm going to not going to add any but that's so that that's and, and most of us that's that's salt. It's it's the stuff, you know, some of us can take it or leave it. My my dad, my dad's very different. My dad, he may have changed some in his older years when I we don't eat with him as much, but most of my life my dad put the food on his plate and it was automatic grab the salt shaker. Every now and then he'd start to grab the salt shaker and my mother would say, well, I, I think I salted that a little bit too much today. It didn't matter. I, it was something he had to. Of course, I've been told good manners is you don't ever salt the food until you first tasted it. So there's a little etiquette point for you there. But that's, that's my, okay, so, I mean, all right, so I, I guess that's kind of okay. I mean, that's kind of cool, Brother Barr. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the stuff that gets sprinkled a little bit. So I, I got to thinking a couple of days ago since last Sunday night. I wonder what salt was like. I, I wonder what the context of salt was for that group that day when Jesus told them, you are the salt. I, I wonder if all they were thinking of was the little salt shaker on their table at home. Or the salt they added to their chips at the Mexican restaurant. So I, I, got, to, I got to researching a little bit. And thank God it's 2022 because you can sit right on your laptop and do all the research you want. You don't have to go to the library anymore and check out books and all that. So I, I, I want you to, I want you, and maybe some of you are already fully aware of this, so just humor me for a moment, but I have a feeling there's some of you that are in a category of me that, that that's kind of, that's the context. 
Anybody that that's sort of your context of salt? This is not a trick question. If your hand is up, then I'm assuming you know everything I'm about to say. Maybe I mean, if your hand is not up, there's a bunch of you hadn't raised your hand, so I'm about to give you the mic and let you explain what I'm about to explain. So, so I, I want you to listen to you, and I'm not going to give you every source. It's, I've got the, the link in, in my notes. If you don't trust me or you want it afterwards, I, I will, I'll be happy to share it with you. So, so, so listen to this, first of all, kind of with the discovery of, of salt. The founding and expansion of great civilizations such as the Greek and Roman empires ancient Egyptians and Phoenicians, early Chinese dynasties, and many more, the founding of of great civilizations are closely linked to the history of salt and people's need for it. Okay, maybe there's something more to this than the stuff that just sits on your table. So while salt is cheap and plentiful today... Its historical importance and central role in human civilization should not be underestimated or forgotten. I pray that over the next little bit here this evening that you would get a revelation of the significance of what God is saying about you and me and us collectively when He says you are the salt of the earth. That He's not just saying you're this little bit of stuff that just gets sprinkled around everywhere to just make things taste a little bit better. There is something far bigger, something far greater that God is saying about you and I when He says you are the salt the earth. I continue reading. Between its ability to preserve food and its dietary importance to both humans and their domesticated animals, as well as its significance in medicine and and religion, salt quickly became a highly prized and heavily traded commodity in the ancient world, and it remains that way today. Those salt packets that you didn't use at Chick-fil-A and just threw away is a highly prized and heavily traded commodity. And again, maybe not so much in 2022, but in the context of the day in which Jesus said this, you wouldn't have thrown the salt packets away. In fact, you probably would have gone into five guys to get your food and tried to sneak a few extra in your pocket to take home. I continue on. Now, now listen to this. Again, again, this is, this is I'm, I'm assuming a bunch of you that didn't raise your hand, you were just being lazy because if all of you all know all this already, I'm impressed. This, 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 what you and I look at as being, and, and, and it's kind of interesting because maybe, maybe the devil was kind of aware that, that come 2022, that we would not look at salt as anything all that significant. I mean, yeah, of course, you know, we need it, man. We've, we've got the master grillers up here, master smokers, not cigarette smokers, meat smokers. We, I mean, these, these two guys, I'm telling you, if you've never had the privilege of eating either one of them, these guys' meats, you are missing. You, you need to go give them 50 bucks and tell them, please make me something. Oh, my goodness. I, I, church gave me a green egg years ago, and, and I, I, almost every time I use that, all I can do is think about Jim Barr and Glenn Middleton and feel like how out of my league I am. So if, if, you're a, if you're a good cook, I mean, I, I've gotten into a little baking the last couple of years, and, man, I, I got the cookbook out, and I'm line by line making sure. When, I mean, the more you cook and the better you get. I, I watch some of those baking shows, man. They're just dumping stuff in. Why are you laughing at me? My wife, All y'all are sitting with me, and my wife's laughing at me. I, they got the kids, I haven't really watched this one much, but they got the kids baking championship. Nine and ten year olds just going scooping out ingredients. Not, I mean, no recipe, nothing. 
So, so if, if, if to us today, there, there's, there, it's not that there's not a value, but it's also not something that's, that's scarce to us. It's not something that is, that is highly prized. So let's, listen to this. Listen to this next part. Salt. Somebody say salt. High five your neighbor and say salt. That was powerful, wasn't it? Didn't you just... Now li- listen to this. Listen, 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 listen. Salt. Somebody else say salt one more time. Thank you. Salt. So you don't have to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. Salt. Get, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Salt was used as currency in ancient Rome. And the roots of the words soldier and salary can be traced to Latin words related to giving or receiving salt. During the Middle Ages, salt was transported along roads built especially for that purpose. One of the most famous of these roads is the old salt road, the old salt route in northern Germany, which ran from the salt mines to shipping ports. As early as the 6th century in the Sub-Sahara, Moorish merchants routinely traded salt. Get this now, get this. They routinely traded salt ounce for ounce for gold. Salt. Salt. I don't know, maybe I've read that and heard that priest before. And salt, maybe I thought, you know what, I mean, I think you're complimenting me here, God, but I'm not so sure. You're just saying I'm salt. Okay, so I'm supposed to flavor things a little bit. And, and, and salt was traded ounce for ounce. Does that change anybody's perspective a little bit when you read the words of Jesus that you are the salt? You're not just some little bit of flavoring, that you are a valuable commodity that the world needs. In Abyssinia, slabs of rock saw called something or other that didn't copy and paste right, became coin of the realm. Each one was about 10 inches long and 2 inches thick. Cakes of salt were also used as money in other areas of Central Africa. Salt. A soldier's pay consisting in part of salt came to be known as solarium argentum, from which we derive the word salary. A soldier's salary was cut if he was not worth his Kind of changes that phrase a little bit. Well, of course he's not worth his. I mean, what's salt? Currency. A valuable commodity. A phrase that came into being because the Greeks and Romans often bought slaves with salt. And so with regards to soldiers and slaves, the phrase was used. If they didn't measure up, they weren't worth their salt. There are are lots of sayings related to the use of salt. It was often traded for slaves, which is the origin of the expression, not worth his salt. Someone who is the salt of the earth is a dependable, unpretentious person. Salting the earth, on the other hand, refers to an ancient military practice of plowing fields with salt so that no crops could be grown. All that junk the enemy's trying to sow in people's lives, you and I are the salt. You and I are the weed killer to come along and cause seeds that have been sown to produce negative crops. You and I are the salt. We are the thing that has the potential, the ability to prevent that from growing in somebody's life. Last last paragraph. Salt does 
Salt doesn't just make your food tastier. It's actually required for life. Sodium ions, help, sodium ions help the body perform a number of basic tasks, including maintaining the fluid in blood cells and helping the small intestine absorb nutrients. We can't make salt in our own bodies, so humans have always had to look to their environments to fill the need. Early hunters could get a steady supply of salt from meat, but agricultural groups had to seek it out by following animal tracks to salt deposits. You and I are the salt of the earth. Is it any wonder the enemy battles us so much to make us feel like we are insignificant and unimportant? We're just a bunch of crazy people that have bought into some crazy doctrines and we need to get our minds and our lives together. It's no wonder because the enemy has a better revelation of what it means to be salt than what you and I have it means to be. Oh God, let this congregation get a revelation tonight that when you say we're the salt of the earth that's not just some little substance to get sprinkled here and there but that is a valuable commodity so it's a really good chance when Jesus said to that group that day you are the salt of the earth they weren't sitting there going oh wow I'm something to be sprinkled here and there a little bit in fact, I, I think they probably were sitting there and when he said to that group that day, you are the salt of the earth, I, I think some of them were probably going, whoa, wow. That, that's what we are? That's who we are? The currency that at one point was traded ounce for ounce for gold? How much, how, much, how much salt do you think I'd have to have today to get somebody to trade me gold? I mean, I think if I had a, tr a dump truck load of salt, I might get somebody to give me an ounce of gold. Not for them. They understood there was a, value, a great value to that. And, and, and so not only, wow, you're saying that's who we are, but then also they're prob some of them are probably looking around going, I, I hear what you're saying. But, but me? Me? Yeah, you. You are the salt of the earth. And, and so again, I realize today our, our perspective on that may not be what it was then, but oh God, give us some revelation and understanding what you were saying based on what it would have meant to them then. Here, here, here's the problem, though. Back to, back to the just boil it back down to the simple little way we may think of it. If I've, if I've got my, if I got my basket of chips, it doesn't matter if I've got a five-gallon container of salt on the table. If there's no interaction. Between the chips and the salt. I, re I keep saying this and I really mean it. I don't, I don't keep saying it to be flippant and whatever. I really mean it. I'm, I'm, I'm really nervous because I really don't want you folks to stop emailing me or texting me or telling me stuff. I really don't want you to. And I realize when I do what I'm about to do, what I did the other night, it, 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 it causes some of you to be reluctant, although there's probably a few people that you... You, you, you're probably going to send me something the more I do this just to see if you'll get your name called. So please don't stop. And, and if I, I really do, any, anything I may ever share, I really do, first of all, try to judge if there's any level of confidentiality to it or, or if it's private or personal. I, I, I won't just share it unless I have permission. So I, I really wasn't going to, I had no plan of doing this, but we, we all want to, we, we, we want to be salt. We want to be, I, I, don't, I don't doubt there's a person in this place tonight that doesn't want to be salt and light. But the problem is, if we're not careful, we, we, we want to be salt and light. Just, just, just leave me in the container. I, I don't want it to cost me anything. You know, and, and, uh, and, and I really, after we, Brother Hodges and I met a couple of days ago, and, 
uh, just kind of updating me and sharing with me what all's going on. Do, do you know that as of right now, they've been going to the Philip. They've been going to the Philippines several times over the last couple of years. All about ministry. You know, right now, as of this point, this church, uh, I think one or two people may have done something kind of on a personal level, but right now this church has not done one single thing to assist them in any way. Out of his own pocket, based on retirement money, based on other things that he's done through the years. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow. Anywhere you open up the door. Some of you are sitting around singing that song, but waiting for somebody to come with a, with a, 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 a cart. What's a fancy word? What's them things they carried kings and queens on? Bitter. Litter. The thing cats use, that's what they carry the people on? Okay, whatever. So, some of you are waiting for somebody to carry you through the door. Heading back, I, 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 I've traveled overseas. It's not cheap to buy an airline ticket. Didn't ask. We sat in my office the other day. He, he didn't ask, hasn't asked one time. I, I got to tell you, I'm not trying to be mean tonight. I, I'm getting wearier and wearier by everybody sitting around proclaiming your call, proclaiming you got a burden, you got a desire, and you're just staying in the container because that's where it's safe. I, I got to, I'm, I'm sorry, Nandy, I, you have to forgive me if you get mad at me, but I got a, I got an email from Brother Nandy Martinez a couple days ago, and and uh, I, I probably won't get all the details exactly right, but I, I'll get the gist of it. Guy, guy pulls up in a trailer outside of where he's working and needs a place to park the trailer for a little while and comes to Brother Nandy, finds Brother Nandy. He didn't know he was Brother Nandy. He's Brother Nandy to us. Finds Brother Nandy and asks him, and so uh, Brother Nandy tells him he can just leave it basically outside of his workplace. And then, and then the guy says you know any place that I can take my family, his family was with him, any place I can take my family to shower and freshen up? I don't remember all the details of the story in between then and there. I know what I might have done, just to be fully transparent and honest with you. I, I might have responded and said, man, you know what, I, I, man, I don't really know of any place around here. I'm, I'm sorry. I, or, or I think what I may have done, the one thing I think I may have done was say, you know what, I'll, I'll take you to a hotel room and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll pay for it and let your family go in and clean up and freshen up. You know what they did? Complete strangers. Brought them into their home. Open their house to them to use their shower. Sat them at their table. Fed them. Shared the word of God with them. And they said, when we get back to Texas, right, we're going to look for an apostolic church. Yeah, I know, we can all sit and clap for them. I'm not try, I, I'm being, I was being on, I'm not trying to disappoint you. Or I, I don't know if I would have been as to strangers. But you know what, that's, that's, that's getting a revelation. And, and here's the other thing, and oh God help us, God help us. I, there, there's nobody in this place that wants to see people baptized and get the Holy Ghost in this congregation any more than I do. Not one person. But somehow we've, we've got to get away from the mentality that, that our primary goal and focus with every person we meet is we've got to get them baptized. We've got to get them baptized. They didn't get baptized the other night. They didn't receive the Holy Ghost the other night. But, but, but there was some salt. 
that flavored their life. And who knows what the outcome of that's going to be. But the bottom line is our job is not to determine the outcome. Our job is not to be worried about the outcome. Our job is just simply to be who it is we've been called to be. Listen to what listen to what the, the, the words and I, and I, I taught on this more so on Thursday night a little bit. I'm not I want to I'm not coming at the same thing here this evening. But 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 I, I, I the root word I didn't share this Thursday night. But the root word the phrase that says if the salt has lost its savor. Those three words come from a Greek word and the root word. Listen to the root word of that lost his savor. <laughs> it means to be dull. Or stupid. As if shut up. To be dull or stupid. As if to be shut up. Meaning the flow is cut off. How do you keep your savor? By letting there be an outward flow. By letting there be an outward flow. Sometimes that outward flow is through our words. Sometimes that outward flow is through a kind touch. Some, some, sometimes that outward flow is through giving somebody some financial provision. But there's got to be an outward flow if I'm not, if I'm not going to lose my savor. <laughs> the word, that word there morally means a blockhead. When you are not being the salt... That you've been created to be. You're, you're dull. I won't call you that other word. You're a blockhead. Why is it? Why is it that we want to bring, and, and, and hear me in the right context. If you hear me in the wrong context, you're totally going to miss what I'm trying to say. But why is it we want to try to constantly bring our walk with God and relationship with God and our level of commitment down to everybody else? We, 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 uh, th- 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 there's a difference in what's in this container than everything around it. You can't impact what you're trying to impact if you're just like what you're trying to impact. It's no wonder the enemy has fought so hard to get Christianity in the church to just become more and more like the world, to get churches to become more and more like the world. Because how do you impact, how do you flavor something when it's the same? I've said it many times and I'm going to keep saying it. I would rather someone come and sit through a church service and walk out of here and say, I will never go back to that place because you people are crazy. You all are strange. You are different. I would rather them say that than to come sit through a service here and walk out and say, I'll never go back there because that doesn't taste. That has no more flavor than anything else, than any place else. Oh, God, don't let us ever get comfortable with just trying to blend in and be like everybody else someone said to someone at some point in the past is that broad enough for you well I, this is a little different than what I'm used to where I go to church I'm used to such and such okay and if you'd rather have such and such Go there. But we're trying to be salt. And salt adds a different flavor, but salt does something else. Brother Jeff Alex said it to me this morning after service. There's another thing about salt. Salt causes you to be more thirsty. Salt causes you to want more. I wonder, I I believe, I know some of you may not know this or believe this, but I think there's people that come sit through a service and they're like, boy, y'all are crazy, y'all are different, I don't think I'm ever coming back. But unfortunately, what they didn't know is somewhere along the way, somebody snuck by and put, put a little bit of salt on them. And while they thought there was something crazy and weird, they go back to where they were. And you know what? This just doesn't have quite the same flavor. This just doesn't end quite the same way. Oh, God, you and I are the Salt. (laughs) 
that this is interesting to me. I, I never, I, I, I've never thought of this before, and 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 this is one of those things. There, there's things that obviously. Uh, first of all, everything we believe, everything we believe collectively, individually, everything we teach and preach, should there, it should not contradict the Word of God in any way. But 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 there are some things that are very plain in the Scripture, and you you can read them word for word. You don't. It's it's not just about applying principles. It's it's it says it right there. I mean. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. That, that, that's pretty simple, straightforward. But, but then there's some other things that sometimes we, you know, we dig in and we start to look. And I know there's a danger, in, you know, especially when you're always, you're always trying to come up with a unique angle. I mean, as a preacher, you, 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 you know, you want to be that guy that gets up there and people are like, Whoa, I've never heard that before. Wow, well, hopefully if you haven't heard it before, it's in the book. Because if you haven't heard it before and it's not in the book, oh, well, it doesn't matter. You're better off hearing what you heard before a thousand times again if it's in the book than something that's really cool and neat but it's not in the book. So all of that, y'all, the, the problem y'all have is y'all get all my talking for the week. So all the rambling some of you do all week long, I do it a couple of moments here and there. All of that to say this, that there are some things that, that I, I want to be caught in my own. Sometimes I've looked at some things, brother, I'm like, wow, I think this could be, but, but I'm not going to build a doctrine off of it if it's not as, but, but, but so listen, all of that to say, listen to this, because I, I can't show you in black and white, but I wonder if in the context of what Jesus said, I, 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 this, this just kind of hit me. Uh, this afternoon, and, and, and so I, I read it again, Genesis 19, 26, and, 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 and so this is, this is the story of Lot and, and his family, and the angels have come, and they've told him, you got to get out of Sodom, and God's going to destroy it, and so when you leave, you can't look back. And so the Bible says they're leaving, and as they're leaving, Genesis 19, 26, but his wife looked back from behind. And, and most of you know what she became. According to the scripture, she became a pillar of salt. Hmm. You know, God had the ability to just zap her and be nothing. Just you know, shoot a lightning bolt down there, and all there is is a little bitty brown spot left on the ground from the burn mark. Or, or he could have, he, he could have just, she could have just fallen over dead. But according to what the scripture says, when she looked back, she became a pillar of salt. So I wonder, again, I'm not making a doctrine here. I'm just stirring up your minds and stirring up my minds. I wonder if possibly the significance of that is God turned her in to what she should have been. You should have been salt in Sodom and Gomorrah. And if you'd have been salt in Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah may not have ended up in the condition it was. So now that you're walking away and you're still looking back, just as one final thing, I'm just going to turn you in to what you should have been. I don't know about you, but I don't want God turning me into what I should have been when it's too late. I would like to just surrender myself right here, right now. God, if you've called me to be salt in the earth, if you've called me to be salt to the people I interact with, if you've called me to be that prized commodity, here I am. First Peter 2, 9. You're not going to find the word salt here, but I think in principle it really ties in. You are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of 
of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Notice the, notice the, the, the wording of verse number 9. He didn't say that you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you, that, that, so that you should praise God. And obviously we know we're supposed to. Praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath pray. We know all that. We know that we are supposed to praise the Lord. But it did not say that we were those things that we were supposed to praise the Lord. It said that we were, su- we were supposed to show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. If you dig into that a little bit, really what He's saying there is by what's going on in our lives, by the things that are happening, in and through our lives we are showing forth the praises we are showing forth the goodness and the blessings and the greatness of God are you walking into the workplace and showing forth are you walking into a classroom and showing forth and I'm not saying by walking in there and just breaking out in a hallelujah and doing a dance I I don't consider myself to be very much of a, a, a of a rebel, but I, I think some there's some areas I feel like I am. There, they, I saw this clip going around on social media a while back. This lady was getting her degree and it looked like a college graduation ceremony. And she gets up on the stage and she she's about to get her degree, and I mean she just goes, well, she goes off for about five. I mean they're all like standing there trying to give her. I I don't all things should be done decently and in order. I, 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 maybe you saw it and thought, maybe you're one of the ones that commented on there. Boy, that, that's so awesome. You go, girl. Show Jesus. I, I don't. So I'm, hear me. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about, you know, if you go out to eat tonight, go, wherever you go after church tonight, when you walk in there, you know, just, just get, get in the middle of the restaurant and just start belting out in tongues and dancing and shouting. No. There's a few of you, a few of you that might be bold enough to do that. The rest of us, I really don't believe I'm ashamed of the gospel, but I'm also... So so hear me, I'm not talking talking about that. Talking about the fact that there should just be... There should just be something that's emanating from us that people are going, wow, there's something... There's something kind of different about you. The, the, oh, man. The problem is for people to be recognizing something different about you, you got to be different. Maybe some of us, they're not really recognizing the praises being shown forth because we talk like they talk. We have the same conversations they have. We respond to customers the same way they respond to customers. We, we, we look the same way they look, and so they're not really seeing anything. But, oh, God, I, I, I want to show forth. I want to flavor those around me. I want to I I walk away and, and there be that saltiness that somebody has experienced that Man, I, I don't know what that is, but I want some. I want that. I, I don't know what they have, but I, I want that. I, I don't know what's going on in their life, but I want that. You and I are the salt. And so not only are we salt in the sense of that, and I believe there is a context of that flavoring, but, but, but we are God's priceless commodity. You and I are God's priceless commodity to do business with in this world. We're not just some church attenders or church members. We're not just simply apostolics. We are salt. We're salt. We're salt. Every person. I preached it last Sunday night. Those two stories I shared. One of Brother Urshan and going to Russia to try to help the Siberian Seven. Brother Nathaniel Urshan, and then the other story of Brother Andrew Urshan going to Russia to, to, and, and having major impact in Russia. And, and neither one of those stories, 
neither one of those stories that they have this dream and vision and this this audible voice from heaven telling them where to where to go what to do that they were just simply trying to be focused on being salt and light I wonder I wonder I don't wonder I believe that part of the reason brother Nandy that happened on Thursday is because God knew in fact, if I remember correctly, you said something in the email about some of the things you guys have been praying. God knew. God knew when you said, I want to be salt, He knew He could trust you to be salt. God knew when you, when you said, I want to, I want to be salt. I, I'm not just, it, you know, it's not just a good song or a good thought or a good prayer. Or a good, I, I really want to be that. We are the salt. We are the salt of the earth. I got a question tonight. What, what, what's, what's the priorities in your life? What's going on? What are you doing? What are you involved in that's more valuable? That's more meaningful than being the salt of the earth. What's the, what's the world going to do if the salt loses its savor? What's, go, what's the world going to do if the church doesn't get an awakening of what we are and who we are and what we're called to be and we're not, we're not called to be chameleons. We're not called to blend in. I, I, I'm sorry, folks. I'm not trying to get distracted here tonight. The, 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 the things we believe and teach and preach are not the problem. Attitudes can be the problem. Approaches can be the problem. The bottom line is the world is looking for something different. And, and I got, as not uncommon, I got, got sidetracked. <laughs> I, I, there, there's not, how many, of you, how many of you here tonight have a job, you work a job? How many of you, maybe you don't work a job, how many of you are, go to school, still in school, so we get the younger ones, yeah. How many of you work and go to school? I wonder what would happen to every single person, whether it's those of you that are now in the workforce, those of you that are still in school, whatever setting. I wonder what would happen if we really got the, the revelation and the confidence that wherever I am, I'm here by divine appointment. God put me here. How many of you, how many of you, you're in the job you're in right now because one morning or one night or at some point you were praying and talking to God and the Lord spoke to you and said, you know, that's, that's what you work in a campus, on a campus right now, what do you, what's the job of the athletics? Thus saith the Lord to you, Stephen, go work with athletics. At the, did that happen? Really? Well, then maybe you must be in the wrong place then. How many of you believe the Word of God when it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord? If I'm trying to live a life that's surrendered and yielded to God, that's the promise that my steps are ordered by Him. That means wherever I'm going, wherever He's taking me, need to trust. I'm not here by accident. You don't have the job you have by accident. You say, well, it's the only job I could find. Well, maybe it's the only job you could find because the only way God could get you in that job was if it was the only job you could find. Well, I want another one. Well, maybe when you, maybe, you know, I want a better one. I want to get make more money. I want to be able to take care. Well, maybe if you would start to look around why he's got you there first. And just work on being salt. Maybe, maybe you, 
Maybe he'd give you the next opportunity. You know, it, I got to tell you, it's, it's kind of hard to be salt here. I work here. I'm here throughout the week. This is where my job is. It's kind of hard to be salt. He's already salty. I can't. There's all these other salty people around here. It's kind of hard to be light. I, I, so I, that doesn't excuse me. I gotta find opportunities. I gotta put myself in position so I can be salt and light. But my point is, you, you most of you don't work here. And what would happen if every one of you believed? Because I don't think most of you believe this. I think some of you might really believe it, but I don't think most of you do. But what if you really believe that where you work and the job you have, that God put you there in just as much as He put me in the job I'm in? Well, God called you. Well, I got news for you. I don't have that moment where God told me, go be the pastor of Antioch. I didn't have that. I just... Trying to do what I'm supposed to do. So if you don't have that, I don't have anything different than you have. But God, God has put you to be salt and light. And again, let's let's take, people need to get, people need the Holy Ghost. People need to get baptized. They need to speak in tongues. They need all of that. It's got to happen. Paul said, some sow, some water. God gives the increase. Oh, God, give us, give us a revelation of who we are and that wherever we are, whatever interactions we're having with people, that we are being salt, that we, are, we may be the only salt that they ever come in contact with. So to bow your head, close your eyes said it to you last Sunday night. I'm going to say it again tonight that this is, this is not leading to some evangelistic effort. This is not leading to some planned outreach that, that there, there's, uh, if, if God will do what God wants to do, this is, so, this is beyond that. That's, that's not... I, 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 I said it. I'm going to say it again from last Sunday night. We've spent We've spent six years now getting a foundation in place. We've, we've spent six years working on Oikos and working on Grow and working on other things that are needed to help equip and disciple and, pr- and train and, and develop and grow people. And, 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 and I think all of that was necessary, but, but I believe the Holy Ghost. I know that there's there's people getting the I mean, we got we got we got people sitting here tonight over the last couple of years have gotten the Holy Ghost, got baptized. They're now a part of us. It's not that that hasn't been happening. It's not that people aren't getting touched and changed. But I I think there's a there's another level God wants to take us as a congregation to. I I guess without any real great hype or emotion, I just. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want, I want to open this altar. Just, just maybe, maybe in this context, I guess for now. But there's some people here. If you're here tonight and you're willing, you want to say, God, I, I want to, I want a revelation and an understanding of what it means for me to be salt, and I want to be salt. God, I, I want to I wanna get a grasp on what it means that I'm salt. I, I want to I get an understanding of the significance of that. And, and, and not just so I can sit around feeling good about myself because of that. But, but I, I want to get that so that I can then go and be salt. Anybody willing to just make your way down to this altar and present yourself to the Lord? Day star, shine down on us. Let your love shine through us. It's a dark world. 
It's a lonely world. It's a broken world. You, God, and your church are the only answer to that world. Oh, God. I pray for every individual in this place tonight, God, for a fresh revelation and understanding that that we're not just some insignificant believers. We're not just some insignificant church goers, church members. God, you have you have brought us into something so much greater, so much bigger. Oh God, not we don't want to ever become arrogant. We don't ever want to become proudful and cocky. But we need a we need a revelation of who we really are, our significance. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, you've you've called us to be something amazing. You've called us to be something amazing, God. You've called us to be something that's so significant that can have such a great impact on this world. We want to be what you've called us to be. We want to be what you've called us to be, Lord. I want to be. I want to be, God. I want to be. I want to be salt. I want to be the salt I'm supposed to be. Oh, yes, Lord. I say yes. I say yes, I say yes. Lord, I agree. My desire. Anybody feel passionately about it tonight? Anybody feel passionately about it tonight? God being what you've called me to be is not just a take it or leave it thing. It's not just a take it or leave it thing in my life, God. I I'm passionately I want to passionately be. I want to passionately be what you've called me to be.